Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Leaf from Coding with Leaf, and today we have a really special video coming to you guys. It's about cryptocurrency trading bots. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to be making a bot that automatically trades ERC20 tokens on PancakeSwap on Binance Smart Chain. But this bot could hypothetically work with any uh, exchange that's forked from Uniswap. So that's Uniswap, SushiSwap, uh, QuickSwap, all those exchanges would work with this bot. You just need to type in different contract addresses. And we'll discuss that on how to do that today. So if you guys could hit that like button, it would mean so much to me if this does end up helping you guys out. It'll push it out to other developers trying to learn this stuff, trying to make their own cryptocurrency bots. And also, if you guys want some free Bitcoin, click my link in the description down below. It's for BlockFi. They're a really great platform and they offer you interest, like a high interest savings account for storing your Bitcoin on the platform. And if you deposit $100 or more, they're going to give you up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin. So definitely just go take advantage of that link in the description, guys. Awesome. Let's get into the bot. So here I'm in my development environment right now, and basically I just opened a Visual Studio Code, started a new project, and I added a secrets.json folder where I put um, basically my private key for my um, mainnet Ethereum wallet. Obviously, I'm not going to show you guys that. And then also I put an API key from this service. Head on over to the platform Anchor, and that's where we're going to be setting up an API. So you just kick the Create button here, and then we're going to click Binance Smart Chain because we're going to be doing this on Binance Smart Chain. I actually already made one here. And once you click on the project that you've made, it'll take a little bit of time to set up. Then you can go to Settings, and you'll find your WSS API key. And that's a WSS. This is a WebSocket. The WebSocket allows us to constantly monitor the state of the blockchain so we can listen for events happening on the blockchain. Whenever an event, say somebody swaps a certain currency for another currency, we can see that event and then act upon that when that happens. That's why we need the WSS endpoint. Once we have the WSS endpoint, you can just put that in the secrets.json as well. And then we can get started with our project. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do MPMI ethers. And we can actually do dash dash save dev ethers. And that will install ethers into our um, node project here. And then we can just create a new file and we'll call it bot.js. This is going to be the file that we run. All right, guys. So obviously we're going to require ethers. Uh, we just require ethers here. This is, uh, we just installed this, of course. And then we're also going to require our secrets. So that we just have our two imports for the project. So next thing you guys are going to have to do is you're going to have to find a pair of tokens. The way Uniswap and all of its forks work is when somebody declares that they want to have a liquidity pool, they have to give two tokens. Say I wanted to give wrapped BNB and uh, the Binance USD token. Okay, well, we make that liquidity pool and then there's a pair between the two and then you declare the fee price. So there's a factory that makes these pairs automatically. We have to find the contract that actually has this pair. Basically what I did guys is I went to this contract on Binance Scan, Binance Smart Chain Scan, and uh, this type of contract exists on any platform that there's a Uniswap um, clone on. And here under the contract, we can read the contract and get pair here. And basically we can just type in the two addresses for the smart contracts. So this is the one for wrapped BNB. And this is the one for um, the Binance Smart uh, Binance Smart Chain USD, and then it returns the address of the pair. So now that we know the address of the pair, I actually have it pulled up already. Um, we can just copy and paste that into our code. All right, so we have the pair contract. This is the actual contract that takes care of all the liquidity information for that pair. Now we also need access to the router contract. This is really easy to find. Just Google the uh, PancakeSwap pair contract address. Once you have the pair in the router, um, one thing we're just gonna do just, just to make it easier for us later on, we're actually just going to hard code the values of, w, uh, of RAP BNB and the Binance USD. So after we have our state variables, we have to make a provider. So a provider is basically uh, something that can read the blockchain. So remember how we had that uh, WebSocket provider, the WSS endpoint? Well, we're actually gonna need to put that in, right in here. We'll just use ethers.providers.webSocketProvider and then we'll pass it in the URL. And again, I have the URL in my secrets.json so you guys can't take it. Then we set up a wallet. Basically, you just say ethers.wallet and then pass it a private key and it takes care of all the information there. So that's just a private key of whatever wallet you want to use. The next thing we need is a signer. So we just need to connect the provider to our wallet. And then we have an object that basically can interact with the blockchain under the uh, 
wallet address uh, that we passed it. So now that we have all that information, we have a way to interact with the blockchain with a signer here, and he'll be able to sign transactions. So we actually need to swap. When we actually need to swap, we'll use this signer object. So right after that, we're going to create this thing called a contract. So pair contract is going to, this is going to be an object in ethers.js that allows us to interact with a smart contract. So when we make the new contract, we have to pass it three things. We have to pass it an address. So we're just going to pass it pair because this is going to be the pair contract. The next thing we need to pass it is an ABI, which basically is hard coded values showing what the smart contract can actually do. So in here, we're actually going to post, we're actually going to paste the actual code in the smart contract that we want to access. So this event here, this swap event, we need to hard code and tell um, ethers that this is actually a function of the pair contract. So they know that this, so they know how to interact with it. The next thing we need is the function get reserves. This is another function that we um, can get our, from the pair contract. If you guys are wondering, how do I know this information? Well, I actually went to Binance um, smart chain scanner. I went over to the contract. I hit, um, and I actually looked, scrolled through the contract and I could find the things that I need. And the last thing we need to pass it is a signer. And that's going to be the thing we just connected here. So now that we have all that information, we have this pair contract up and working. So now this is now we can actually interact with the blockchain using the signer. The next thing we need is a router contract. And this is going to be the exact same implementation, except it's going to be with a router contract. And here we're going to pass it the same type of thing, except we're going to pass it router, obviously. And then we're also going to pass it same type of deal, an array. And inside the array, we're going to pass it the functions that we need to interact with. So the first function we need is the get amounts out. And this is going to be the function that actually returns us values. Uh, so we can estimate how much it's going to cost to do each transaction um, with token wise. And the last function is swap exact tokens for tokens. And this function allows us to swap an exact amount of tokens for another type of a token. And that's how we actually uh, interact with the pair. Great. Now that we have our two contracts set up, all we need to do is listen for a specific event to happen on the blockchain. Our WSS, our web socket provider, allows us to listen for a specific event on the blockchain. That's why we're using it. So we're going to do pair contract dot on, and we're going to pass it the swap. And it knows how to interact with a swap event because we told it here. So whenever the swap event is called, it'll be able to figure that out. And we'll call an asynchronous function here. And inside the async function is where we're going to do our logic. So for example, we can interact like console log and then just say a swap happened in this pair contract. So that means that somebody traded uh, wrap BNB for BUSD or vice versa. Right after that, we're going to get pair data, which is basically just going to be the current reserves of the pair. It's going to return an array and we're going to have to interact with that array. Get reserves returns the current amount of liquidity. So if there was a million uh, dollars worth of BUSD, probably there's more than that. But if there was a million, it would return 1 million uh, ERC20 tokens for BUSD. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, when we get something off the Ethereum blockchain, it gets returned in its actual form. So it's going to be a really, really, really big number because there's going to be 18 zeros after whatever the actual number is. So we're going to have to convert, firm out the units into this way. So it's going to be BNB reserve. Then we're going to have to do the same thing for the USD reserve. We're just going to take the second argument that comes back and do the same thing. All right, now let's do the conversion. We'll actually convert how, what is the current cost of a BNB or a wrap BNB to a BUSD. We'll turn these two values into numbers from strengths, and then we will have our conversion. Awesome. Now we have, now we can just print out to the console that this, that this block time stamp, we have the BNB, the wrap BNB reserve and the BUSD reserve and the current WB BNB price. Let's actually run our application right now just to view what's happening behind the scenes. So we'll do node bot.js. So now it's running and it's waiting for a swap to happen. And when a swap does happen, you guys will be able to see it. All right, guys, a swap actually happened and it got logged. So you can see the block timestamp. You can see the reserve of um, wrap BNB, the wrap, the reserve of BUSD, and then we can convert the price. B, uh, WBNB is currently worth $392. 
That's awesome information. And now that we know how to interact with that, we have this price information and we can make purchasing decisions off of that. And guys, remember, this video is not to actually make a trading bot that's super profitable or anything. In fact, I don't have a trading strategy that actually works. If I did, I wouldn't be sharing it with you guys. I would be making money myself. In actuality, what I'm showing you guys to do right now is how to code your own. So if you had a trading strategy that would work, you could use that, implement it with this information. So now that we can get the price data of a pair on PancakeSwap, let's actually go through what would happen if we wanted to make a buy. In this case, I'm just going to make a statement that says if conversion is less than or equal to $370, then we're just going to make a buy. Cool. So how are we actually going to make a buy here? Well, it's a little bit confusing because in order to do the swap exact tokens for tokens, we have to not only give it the amount that we're going to put in, we have to get give it a amount we're going to get out of it because there is a flexibility inside the contract because who knows if your transaction is going to happen exactly right after you read the state of the blockchain. What if a million people sell their RAP BNB right before your transaction goes in and you haven't even seen that information yet? Well, that's unlikely, but it is possible. So we have to give it an uh, amount out minimum. So that's the minimum amount we're going to have out or else the transaction is going to fail. So we have to, we have to actually calculate this. So basically what we'll do is we will give it an amount we want to put in. So let's just use a hundred dollars as an example. We'll use, we'll make it. So a hundred dollars is actually the, uh, the BUSC amount in, then we'll have this amounts here and we'll await router contract to get amounts out. It's a function that allows us to calculate the estimated amounts out by passing it BUSD and WBNB. And it's going to figure out on average what the amount out is going to be. Now that we have this amount array, let's actually calculate our amount out minimum. This is going to be a moderately complicated line guys in here. Basically what we're doing is we are um, parsing. Well, I'll start from, I'll start from the, the bottom end. So in here we're formatting our um, response back from get amounts out into a number. So we can minus that by 0.1. Once we format that into a number and then minus it by 0.1 and then bring it to a string and then we call the ethers.parse units to convert it, convert it back into something that's readable by the blockchain. Now the last thing we're going to do guys is we're going to create this transaction here. It's going to await router contract dot swap exact tokens for tokens. And that's the function we declared right here inside it. We need to pass it the amount in. So that's the BUSD amount in then the wrap BNB amount out minimum. Then here we're going to pass it the two token addresses. Obviously we have them up here and then we're going to pass it the wallet. That's actually going to receive the token. So that's going to be the wallet dot address our wallet. And then we have the date dot now plus um, this is going to be basically we have a 10 minute window. If you check here, swap exact tokens for tokens here has the deadline and that's a UIT deadline. So this will just return 10 minutes later. If it doesn't return within 10 minutes, it will, uh, it will revert and the traction and the transaction won't happen. So, and then we can just, uh, wait for it to be finished by using, uh, finished equals await transaction dot wait, and then finished will have our receipt kind of deal. And then we'll just log that out. So guys, if I were to actually run this code right now and it were to try to execute a buy, it wouldn't work because I don't have the amount of funds needed to make this swap. But if you guys did load your wallet with a certain amount of money, you would be able to actually trade your tokens using this code rather than actually going on to PancakeSwap and doing it yourself manually. The power of this code is that you guys can, if you have your own trading strategy, you could use this code to get the price information and uh, use that price information in a way to be profitable. If you guys did enjoy this video, I really appreciate it. You hit that like button. And if you're interested in more blockchain development tutorials, go check out my channel and hit that subscribe button. I post constantly about new blockchain stuff. And for those of you who thinks this video is a little too advanced for your current programming level, that's okay, guys. It takes a while to learn this stuff. Blockchain development is not easy. There's a reason there's so few developers out there actually making YouTube content right now is because not a lot of people know how to do it. So if you want to be one of the people that knows how to do it, please subscribe to this channel and check out my other videos about Solidity, smart contract development, also Ethereum full stack development, and other tutorials similar to that. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, check out that link, go to BlockFi and get your free Bitcoin. Have a nice day, guys. See you in the next video.